Hey guys, welcome back to part two of our login demonstration series. And uh, last time we uh, we left off, we were looking at usernames, passwords, and login times. We created our table. And so let's look at how we can write the code for this now. So let's go over here to our coding. And uh, let's see here. First off, let's get a little bit of coding to navigate between our buttons. So uh, when we create a new user, we should be going to screen number two, right? And once they submit their data, they can go to screen number three. Okay, so let's set up those buttons first. So from screen one, new user. So on the event that we click on, button new user, we're going to set our screen identifier to screen number two. Okay, easy stuff so far. So in screen number two, uh, when we click OK, we're going to submit uh, items into our uh, our table, our database. And um, so when we click on button OK2, right, we'll fill that part in later to submit data. Uh, let's finish the easy stuff first. So on the event that we click on cancel, so cancel 2, we're going to go back to screen number 1. Okay, and let's see here. Uh, when we click OK, so we will. Uh, sorry, no, that will need to verify something. Uh, sorry, once if this data has successfully been verified, we want to go to screen three. Okay, so assuming that we submit the data, it's going to then go to screen three, and from screen three, the back button. So on the event, we click on the back button. Ooh, looks like I have a spelling error. Uh, let's fix that right now. Design, button back, and I'm going to put a three there. Back to my code. So in the event I click on button back three, we're going to go back to screen one. Okay, so this is not going to submit any data into our table just yet, uh, but let's just test this out to make sure that all of our buttons are working. So new user, great. If I cancel, it goes back. New user. Click OK, goes to screen three. Thank you for joining. Back to screen one. Okay, so all the buttons work. Great. Now let's uh, look at submitting the data into our table. So um, uh, they do make a pretty nice connection here. So uh, whenever we need to work with data, so whether it's uh, these server side variables or uh, a table of server side variables, uh, that's all referenced in data. So uh, because we have a new user, we're actually going to create a new record in a table called, and you'll remember the table is called login information. So that's what I'm going to type in here, login information. And we are going to store three pieces of data in the login information, username, password, and login time. Okay. So the way we do that is, um, First off, the instead of name, this is going to be user name. I don't think I capitalize that. I did capitalize it. Okay, so capital U. Keep it consistent. Username, and uh, we're going to get this value from screen number two. We're going to get that value from this text box. Okay, so text username input two. We need to get that information. So I'm going to remove this. And we're going to perform a get text. Okay, and we're going to get the text from text username input two. Okay, so we're going to get that text. We're going to store it to username. And now uh, I'm actually going to go over here to my coding. And every time we put some data in, it's actually separated by a comma. So username, something, something, something. And then there's a comma here. And if I go back to showing locks, oh, it doesn't do that just yet. So if I put in something here, password is my next piece of information you put in. So I've set brackets there. Go back to show locks. Oh, it doesn't like that. I haven't filled anything there. So uh, the next thing is also we're going to get our 
password, just like we've got our username. So it's the same thing here. So I'm just going to copy this. Copy. Paste. And we're going to get the password. Okay. So jump box. So you see that separate by comma? There's chunk number one, the username, getting the information. Password, getting the information from our screen number two. Okay. The last thing we'll need to do is we need to store the time. And the way we work with time, let's move over a little bit, is we're going to add one more comma. So this time we're going to put in the login time. So login, back on here, login time. Okay. Use a colon, and then now we're going to put our data in here. Okay, uh, the way we put our login time is we're going to do a, uh, actually, I need to remember this myself. It's a new date, date.now call. Okay, so it's going to look like this. It's going to look like new date. So this is uh, a little bit of computer code, date.now. Special block. Okay, um, there is a, a very big explanation about this, but uh, just to keep it simple, um, this essentially creates the current time and it will store that information into our login time. And let's just see whether this works or not. Right, so I'm gonna create a new user and my, uh, this should be empty right now. So I'm just gonna create something uh, Alice is my username and password is Bob. Okay. It says thank you for joining. And it looks like it's partially working. Uh, username was stored correctly, password wasn't, and there's no time being thrown in. Right? What is going on here? Let's just double check our things here. Password, get text, password two. And let's just double check a few of these things. Why wasn't that working properly? So we check the design. This is password input to. Okay, so that, that's a reason because there's a mismatch. That's text password input to. Okay, so let's fix that up right now. I should have just used this uh, text password input to rather than typing it in myself. And now I think we can actually get away without having to create an object. Uh, so that's uh, that's actually this little bit of code here. So we might just be able to get away with date dot now. Okay, I'm just gonna remove this, uh, this row of data here. Okay, let's try this again. So I'm gonna try to create a new user. Alice and Bob, password. I've submitted that. Okay, that's looking really good. Uh, except I have an extra passwords. Uh, let's see what the original table look like, looks like. I think maybe there either is an S or there's no S and it just might be a, a little bit of a mismatch. Okay, let's delete this row. And so it's passwords with an S. Let's check out my code. My code has no S in the password. So uh, I guess maybe I, uh, I had one too many S's here. So I'm just going to remove this. And uh, this should be okay now. So uh, it was just a, a problem of having an S, or not having an S here, so I created a new column instead. Okay, let's try that out one more time. Run it. New user. Alice. Bob. Login. Thank you for joining. Great. Okay, so... Uh, there we have it. Username, password, last login time. Okay. Next time we will be looking further into uh, how we can recall data and then how we can compare it. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next time.